Hello and welcome to another Eudaimia ep um, video. So, in this week's item I have this which is something called a note tracker. <clears throat> so we're on to something which I feel helped greatly with my flourishing in the domain of music. And, uh, and this is it. So it's a uh, well, I suppose you could call it a musical slide rule. I think that's actually what they call it. We'll have a look at the, the stuff you get with it. So I've still got the original sort of plastic protective case, although it's uh, over several years, decades of use, it, it started to come up apart. But this, the actual um, note tracker itself is, yeah, remarkably still intact for the amount of times that it's been moved backwards and forwards. So how this is made up is you have this inner sheet of plastic, which is laminated. I mean, obviously there's paper in there somewhere, I think. Um, and then this outer sheet. And the notes are in, arranged in, in such a way, it's two-sided. So on one side, you have um, this, which I'm, I think I probably use the most because the most amount of use I got out of it and the thing I was most interested in was how chords are constructed um, in relation to notes in the uh, in the western scale so it does that in a number of a couple of ways one is it has this really useful interval section which is this sort of diamond shape with additional um, areas because of course it has to cater for notes that that would fall out side representation by this geometric pattern so you can see we've got the root note um, minor second major second minor third major third fourth um is that diminished fifth i think it is um, fifth Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's augmented fifth. Um, minor, ma sorry, major sixth, minor seventh, major seventh, and then the octave. I think that's right. It's been it's been a while <laughs> since I've used this actually. Um, so, oh yeah, look, I should I should have yeah, it's up here. So <laughs> I should have looked up the top didn't see it in the light there um so yeah so so very useful just in terms of seeing how the root relates to intervals in the scale and then from that you can if, if you're familiar with the basics of how certain chords are put together you can actually use just this section here to build your chords however this is really useful is it has sections along here which make life a little bit easier so you've got um, the major chords like major, major seventh, major ninth, major eleventh, major thirteenth laid out. Um, and so how you would use this is obviously if you wanted to know what notes are in the C major, you just line the slide rule up here. Or if you wanted to know what C major thirteen looks like. Now of course the way this is constructed in effect, if you just have the major 13 lined up for C, it'll show you what, um, you know, the the major chord looks like, the 7th, major 7th, the major 9th, uh, the major 11th and the major 13th, just to, again, how is this is constructed. Then we've got the same thing for minor, the same thing from the do for the dominant chords, and then things like some of these more jazzy chords like minor major seventh, minor major ninth, minor added ninth, major added ninth, dominant seven, sharp nine, and then along here, things like major six, minor six, sorry, yeah, minor six, major sixth, suspended fourth, uh, major seventh, flat five, major seventh sharp five augmented um, the diminished seventh the minor seventh flat 
5 and the minor 7th sharp 5. So the cool thing is even if there was a chord that you wanted to construct that wasn't in, in this area you can use this to do it providing you know what the different intervals are that make up that chord. So yeah you can come up with all sorts of crazy stuff. On the flip side you have a similar thing but for scales and modes so what it'll do is working through all the different modes so if we've got for instance here let me pull over to C major because that's slightly easier to see what's going on if you pick that so you can see with C major those are the notes of the C major the Ionian scale if you wanted to know what Dorian looked like with the same notes, so the related the, the relative mode to um, C major for Dorian is D Dorian. Same notes, but one ahead, if you like. Then you've got Phrygian. Uh, again, the relative mode. To, to its major, so that's E Phrygian and then so on. F Lydian, G Mixolydian, A Aeolian, which is the relative minor, and then B Locrian. So that that just alone by just setting up for the for the major gives you all the relative modes um, for that particular for, for that particular scale. Now, of course, if you wanted to know what C Phrygian looked like, what notes it contained, you just move it until you get to there and you can see. Oops. So you have to pick a one. Pick. There we go. It's a better, better example. Doing it this way around. There we go. And there you can see it. There's your, there's your notes. And then the nice thing is, so, that, so those are all the, the main ones, but it covers things like the pentatonic. Uh, minor major so all those lot of nice five note scales uh, the blues scale and the country blues or happy blues and then all of the these sort of adjusted minor scales where often you know a certain note in the the um, relative minor scale the minor scale the aeolian is moved slightly so you might get the jazz minor or the melodic minor ascending and then the natural minor or the also known as the melodic minor descending and then things like the harmonic minor overtone dominant or lydian flat seven uh, hindustan or mixolydian flat six diminished or whole half tone the hungarian minor or gypsy and then neapolitan major neapolitan minor the enigmatic scale and the augmented or whole tone scale so again um you know a lot of things but once again i would say if you happen to know for a particular scale um, that you're trying to aim to work out or you want to create your own scale if you know you can act well you just you, if you know the intervals, you can use this interval thing here. So it'd be a rather boring um, musical slide rule, but you could argue that everything you need to know is in here. The rest of it just makes it that much easier to use. And then there's instructions here. Now, um, in the second part, here. this is really just a, a very nicely laminated instruction booklet so it goes through and it sort of gives you some different you know the intervals chords uh, chord progressions scales and modes on the back here you've got um, just a bit of sales blurb I suppose so it's a quick reference device for practicing musicians and learning aid for both readers and non-readers of music so musician slide rule which displays clearly the note content and the musical structure of all of the musical forms listed on the front cover 
The note content of each interval, chord, scale and mode is shown in all 12 keys and the musical structure appears in consistent geometric patterns. I think that's the bit that I was attracted to most, was the geometric patterns. These stem from the specific angle and distance of each interval from its root or note tracker. And then inside of this, in addition to a sort of extended um, narrative on how to use this and what, you know, like a guide really, and what it all means if you if you want to uh, you want an explanation of how the whole slide rule sort of hangs together in terms of its reference back to to the notes and different scales and, and such like but also it's got this rather handy dandy uh, mapping for guitars bass um, five string bass violin and also keyboard um, and that's obviously indispensable if you not you're not familiar with where notes are on your particular instrument. Um, so I found this really useful. And how I used to use this a lot was obviously you can use it on the fly once you know where all the notes are. Um, you can then just use this to help you. But also, which I found super handy, is I had a whole load of um, grids. Um, so I had some, I think I, at some point I actually bought some tab paper with guitar tab on it. But I, I also just had some of that um, graph paper. And I used to draw up like little segments of the fretboard. And I'd use this um, slide rule in combination with the... Um, the sort of keyboard map in here, I would then um, just write out in tab form what that would look like on the fretboard. And I spent hours doing this. It was just yeah, great fun and yeah, a, a wonderful uh, flourishing experience and a wonderful tool for flourishing musically. Um, yeah, this this just brought me so much. Um, joy and um, engagement over the years. I, I really wanted to share it with everybody that watches the channel. So I look forward to um, you checking out the, the next video I do in the series. I'm You can probably tell from my voice I'm really enjoying these and looking forward to them. I think my next one is probably going to be a book that brought me um, joy and flourishing. So thanks once again for watching. Um, thanks to, to all the people out there that continually come back <laughs> video after video to watch these. Um, you are very much appreciated. Um, and thanks to everybody that checks in. I really love it when someone says, oh, I've been watching your channel for like, you know, the last 10 years. Um, and, and they just uh, decide to, to, uh, to comment. So that's always fantastic when people sort of check, as I call, check in. Uh, it's always nice to say hi and I'll, you know, always endeavour. Um, when, when things are really quiet to, uh, to, to say hi back. So bye for now and have a great rest of the week.